Hello everyone and welcome to today's video. So today we're going to be going over the bones of the shoulder or more specifically we're going to be going over the clavicle and the scapula. First one we're going to be looking at here is the uh, disarticulated model for the uh, scapula and then the clavicle and I'll also show what they both look like on uh, Dr. Captain Jack Merrill, a good old skeleton friend that we've seen a few times already. Uh, so here are the two clavicles. Now one important thing about the, now that we're getting into the appendicular skeleton, is figuring out which bone is left and which bone is right, because there is one of each, of course. Um, so that's, that is an important part of this. You, I might give you an image or show you a picture of the bone, you have to know left or right. Um, so you want to pay attention to that, and we'll look at that, and I'll give you some hints on how you can figure out left versus right on different parts of the skeleton. So let's go back here and just start with the scapula. Scapula starts with an S, so does spatula. If you were to choose any bone to use as a spatula, maybe it'll be this one because of the flat surface. I know this is pretty uh, white right here from the video recording, uh, but we can make out the structure we need to. because. Uh, over here, we can use that. We're going to go to that one then and then stay at this one. So let's first start labeling the important parts. First thing I like to do when looking at this is find the medial border right here. So the longest ridge that we have. So this is called the medial border. I'll write that in here. So that tells you the medial side. This is then the lateral border. And that tells you the lateral side. Not only does that tell you the lateral side, uh, but the shoulder joint does as well. So right here, you can see a little better over here, this is the glenoid cavity. The shoulder joint is called the glenohumeral joint because it's between the glenoid cavity and the humerus, so glenohumeral joint. Uh, so now another thing you need to focus on here is what is the superior side and what is the inferior side. So up here is the superior angle. So that tells you the superior side. So superior angle. Down here is the inferior angle, and that tells you the inferior side. Now think about this. If this is the medial border, if this is inferior, so inferior, down, medial means to the middle, think about where this one would be on the individual. So would this be the left or the right? That's not all the information you need. The only information you really need here is whether this is a posterior or an anterior aspect. This one right here happens to be a posterior. Nope, not this one, not this one. This one is posterior, I was getting ahead of myself. This one is the anterior view. So if this is the anterior view, that tells you it's the one that's towards the front. However, this is the scapula. It's on the back. So don't confuse yourself when thinking about this. Uh, when I look at this, I look for the spine. So this structure right here is called the spine. The spine points posteriorly. Think about that digging into your ribs. You really wouldn't want that to happen. So this is the posterior aspect. So you know, look at the, the spine and then figure out is this what's the superior and inferior side based on the medial border. Then you can kind of orient it where it is on your back. Um, so here, this one, if this is the anterior view, you gotta then imagine flipping it and then putting it back. So this one is actually the right. And then this one over here, this is the posterior view. And also think of the shoulder joint too. So posterior one, this one's in the correct orientation. Over here would be medial. Right here would be lateral, superior, inferior. So just turn it like this a little bit, move it to the back. Uh, this one is obviously left, not because of process of elimination. I could have put two rights here. You don't know that. You don't know how many bones I have, but I just wanted to test you on right versus left. And that's one thing you want to be able to figure out. Now, there are a few different structures here we haven't labeled yet, these giant processes sticking off. Right here, the one that comes off the spine, this one is called the acromion. Sometimes you say acromion process. That's what the acromial end of the clavicle articulates with. And then this one down here, this one's called the coracoid process. So uh, coro, cora, coid process. And you can see that over here. So this is the acromion and this is the uh, coracoid 
process right here. There's also a little notch in here, a little notch uh, labeled over here. Just trust me that it's in here. It's called the sub scapular notch. Now, going with that, so the, the anterior aspect here, this is all the subscapular side, meaning it's deeper. Um, so this is then the sub, this is a shallow groove-like basin. This is the subscapular fossa. Now, there are two other fossas that I can't really draw on here, but it's this region and this region. I can draw them. Um, so this one is, so this is the spine. It is above the spine. So this is actually the supra spinous fossa and then this one down here is the infra so this is the the shallow flattened area this one's in the infra spinous fossa and i'll talk about these again when i move over to that angle and show them but i'm just labeling everything on this one image uh right here so this is all these are all the important parts of the uh, scapulas, you know, there's a lot to label on them. And that's why I wanted to make a separate video mainly just for this one. Uh, so I'm going to erase this now and we're going to move through and then look at the different parts here as I talk about them. Uh, so there's the glenoid cavity. And then over here, um, you can see that that spine, the acromial end of, or the acromion looks like there. You can see the coracoid process. So the processes are important attachment sites for muscles and ligaments. When we get to the muscular system, there's a muscle up here and a muscle down here that are part two important mu muscles in your rotator cuff. This one's called your supraspinatus, supra above. And then this one is called your infraspinatus below the spine. And then there's a muscle underneath on the anterior side called your subscapularis. So, and then you have your teres minor down there as well. But we'll get to that when we get to the muscles. And there you can see that um, notch a little better right there too. Uh, so that that is the scapula. A neat, neat little uh, bone. Next up are the clavicles. Uh, so now, what's the first thing you want to figure out when you look at a clavicle here? You want to figure out the ends. Just, again, left and right are the hardest parts to the appendicular skeleton. Um, so the blunt end. So the clavicle has a blunt end and a more rounded end. So over here would be the blunt end on this one, and then this would be the rounded end. The blunt end is the t part that attaches to the sternum. So it's appropriately labeled the sternal end. Sometimes this can be called the medial end as well. And then the other end, the part that attaches to the acromion, is the acromial end. So now the hardest, one of the harder parts to the clavicles is figuring out left and right. So if this is the sternal end and this is the acromial end, does it go this way or does it go this way? The sternal end could be, you know, flipped and go either direction. One way I remember that is that this S that it makes here, it points out a little bit. And then you also have to make sure you get it correctly if you're looking at the superior or inferior side. So this one is the superior aspect. I'm not going to write it all that out right there. And then when I flip this, you'll see some structural differences. So the superior aspect of the clavicle is smooth. Uh, so this, if this is the superior and I tell you that um, this is the posterior side right here, and this is the anterior side right here. That's all the information you need to figure out how this is oriented in the body. So if you take this sternal end, I tell you the posterior side is there, forms a little S pointing out, that's the anterior end. So this is the right. Over here, this one is uh, flipped. Uh, so the sternal end would be over here, and then, so the acromial end is the lateral side. Now it's not called the lateral end, uh, but it should be pointing laterally. Uh, so this is one is the left. So if I were to show this a little more, because you can't see everything here, there's still a couple uh, parts on this that I need to label. So let's move forward because I know the color gets a little better. Uh, so here it's looking at that one there, uh, showing it flipped over. So now it's in the correct orientation. Uh, so you'd have to flip it this way then and put it on the left side. And then over here, this one we're now flipping. So when we flip this, you see that little notch right there? Uh, so this is on the acromial end right here. This little notch is a tubercle. It's called a conoid tubercle. 
And this tells you that this is the inferior side or the lower aspect of it as well. Uh, so this is a chromial end down here. There's also, it's hard to see on this model right here, but there's a little line that comes down through here that you might see labeled on some things. I wouldn't pick this out for you, but you just might see it places. This is called the trapezoid line right there. And those are the major parts to the clavicle. Uh, so now if we clear this and then go forward here, I do show how they're oriented on Captain Jack. Uh, so here you can see roughly, let's go back right here, how this clavicle, there's the sternal end, comes around and you see how that S kind of points forward if I were to draw that S right here. So this is the acromial end, this is the acromion, and there's the articulation that it makes. And the fl smoother side is up here. Uh, then I turn this aspect around here. We look at the back side of Jack. And you can see how the scapula, so right here is the spine going to the acromion. There's the clavicle attaching there. And then you can see how the completely flat side of the spine is the anterior aspect, whereas this side you're seeing right now is the posterior aspect. So posterior has the spine sticking out. And that's how you want to orient yourself when looking at the scapula or the clavicle, trying to figure out orientation, figure out left and right. And I might not label a specific marking, but by knowing the markings, it will help you figure out what's left and what's right. Uh, so that is all I have for this video here. So I'll play through it one more time, but if you have any more questions, feel free to let me know. Next video is gonna be going over the arm, forearm and wrist, then we're gonna be going down to the pelvis, um, then thigh, leg, and foot. So only a couple videos ago in the skeletal system, but we are getting there. We're now uh, trucking through the appendicular skeleton. But with that, I hope you all have a great day um, and bye-bye.